Virginia's incoming Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears is answering back. You come for her, she's ready. After some on the left suggested that racism explains the GOP's big wins on Tuesday night. First, we have former ESPN host Jamel Hill tweeting, it's not the messaging, folks. This country simply loves white supremacy. And this from a host on MSNBC. To be willing to vocalize that these Republicans are dangerous, that this isn't a party that's just another political party that disagrees with us on tax policy, that at this point, they're dangerous. They're dangerous to our national security because stoking that kind of soft white nationalism eventually leads to the hardcore stuff. Sears, the first woman and the first woman of color selected to statewide office in Virginia, fired back. We are framing too many issues in terms of race, and it just continues to divide us. And, 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 and unfortunately, politicians are using it as a tool mm. because of the things that have happened to us historically to advance, I would think, their nefarious purposes. I wish Joy Reid would invite me on her show. I'm, let's see if she's woman enough to do that. She talks about white supremacy. Does she know that I ran against a white supremacist? I mean, Joy, come on, get your facts straight and then come talk to me. Does she know? Tommy Lahren, that would mean <laughs> that Reid would need to read. <laughs> Yeah, and it would mean that the left has to stop their obsession with race and stop using it to pit us against each other. You know, this was supposed to be the party coming in in 2020 of unity, and we've seen everything but unity coming from them. But they have to be obsessed with race because that's the only thing they have in their toolbox. But I'll tell you this, Harris, is something that we all know. The Americans that are struggling right now, mm -hmm. they're struggling regardless of their race. They're struggling regardless of their sexual orientation or their political affiliation. When you go to fill up gas, when you go to the grocery store and there's nothing on the shelves or the prices of inflation are are costing your family so much more each week and each month. It really doesn't matter the color of your skin. You're suffering because you have a Biden doctrine and a Biden agenda that's not working for the American people. But instead of recognizing that, instead of stepping aside and coming together as Americans to fix problems for all Americans, they have to use these wedge issues of race to drive us further apart because there is nothing left in the toolbox. I hope they learn their lesson. As we see more people of color coming through the ranks in the conservative movement, I think they're going to have no choice but to have a day of reckoning with that. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the big things on Winsome Sears' resume really have nothing to do necessarily with being a woman of color, Ben. I mean, as we look at this, she has a very yeah. compelling story uh, coming from Jamaica and making her dreams come true. But she served our military. And we're grateful for her, safe, her service to our nation. And the only colors that matter no there are red, white, and blue. Well, and this is the part that I think Democrats don't understand. Republicans do not look at the color of someone's skin first and then decide if they're going to vote for them or not. They look at what the content of their character. They look at their resume. They look at what they've done over their life. When you look at the candidates the Republicans put up in Virginia, and I can say this as a white guy, you don't get any whiter than Terry McAuliffe. You don't get any more elitist and white than Terry McAuliffe. You don't get any more waspy than Terry McAuliffe. And for Democrats to claim that they're the party of, you know, minorities, give me a break. You took the whitest candidate you could find in Virginia, the most elitist white candidate you could find in Uranium. Look at what they did in New Jersey. It's the same thing. They found the richest, whitest guy they could find, said, vote for that rich white guy. Republicans are picking their candidates based on the content of what they believe in, based on what they've done as a body of work. And that's what won in Virginia. Is it a bonus that it shows the hypocrisy of the left? Absolutely. But I do hope that the Democrats don't figure out that this race game is not working. I hope they stick with it. I hope they stay with it through the midterms, through the next presidential election, because it will bring all of them down. I hope they're not smart enough to fix it. Well, they don't have a lot of time, and we hope for the country yeah. that, that things can get better. But that, again, I don't know if we have a lot of time if they stay in the majority. We'll have to see, because there's a lot of infighting in their own party over those woke, uh, over those woke virtue-signaling behaviors. But you pointed out something, Ben, that I want to talk to uh, with Emily and, and Kaylee on the couch, and that is the fact that both of these Democrats in Virginia and New Jersey, won an incumbent, so, you know, in succession, but both of them had been previous governors of their state, right? I mean, Murphy's still obviously the incumbent, Terry McAuliffe some time ago, but what does that tell you about the electorate? I mean, do you think that as Ben's saying, 
that throughout all that process, and by the way, they had a white Democrat governor previously, Northam, who had not one, not two, but I mean, several incidents, incidents he was racist. Alleged, alleged that he was dressing up in blackface and so and racist. Well, first of all, it shows just how poorly they performed because usually incumbents have an advantage, a clear advantage. There in Virginia, obviously, that was overcome. And then in New Jersey, the, the tightness of the race is what belied the fact that it that, that it wasn't a clear advantage. And secondly, I think because voters saw through, for example, McAuliffe's poor performance. They saw reading and math proficiency plummet there in Virginia after he introduced politically uh, agendaed education platforms there. And I have to point out, just, just going back to the... Um, to win some Sears and her historic election that seems to be ignored by the left. Just remember that Democrats refuse to ever deviate from their playbook, to ever deviate. Yes. Whether it's making everything about race or making everything about spending your money on ridiculous things. And here, it's just like, remember when Larry Elder and his campaign for California governor, remember when he was egged by a person in a gorilla mask? Did any mainstream media outlet no. pick that up? Did anyone no. call it out for the racist attack that it was? Absolutely Nobody. not. So here, Winsome Sears, which is an amazing, accomplished veteran who served on the Department of Education and so much more, has been ignored because any exception to the playbook the Democrats have will be absolutely ignored by the likes of Jamel Hill and beyond. And quick final point, I just have to say, this is why the Wall Street Journal pointed out that the racial demagoguery totally failed. Remember, McAuliffe said, Youngkin has run a racist campaign from start to finish uh, on PBS one of the writers for WAPO came out and said quote the reason he will lose is because he'd been tap dancing with white supremacy that's their way back into power talking about the GOP no they won their way back but into who power does that because trigger of the issues on the left? like who who yeah. and because the, the point is to get people to come out and vote right right so who are they triggering to come out and vote and why didn't they you know I mean Terry McAuliffe had some years between the time that he was governor and was trying to be governor again did, did he go to sleep? I mean, was he not keeping up with everything that the nation's been going through? Is he out of touch? What is the yeah. deal? Who is he triggering to come to the polls by shouting about Trump and, and all these other things? Yeah. What, what do they think about I, their own base? It's a brilliant question. I guess they think that's what their base wants to hear, and maybe a very small minority of their party wants to hear this kind of rhetoric. The mainstream does not, but Emily's right. They will double down on this playbook and it's a peculiar move because you have this really negative gloomy message of Trump 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 we're going to attack Trump and we're going to call you all white supremacists <laughs> versus the rosy optimism of Winsome Sears saying I am the American dream versus Glenn Youngkin saying I was just a 15 year old boy taking out the trash and I want to hold the office that Patrick Henry did and Thomas Jefferson you know would you consider hiring me what a contrast you've got optimism and you've got really dark negative let's just attack the last guy uh, it's not going to work. Uh, Emily, just real quickly, and, and I love how you put that, mm -hmm. the oppositional nature of, of looking forward to optimism and, and pessimism. Can you come from double-digit polling showing that you are lagging in your ideas and your ability to be believed to be a leader in the, in the public's eye? Can you come from such a low place as President Biden and help lift your team in 2022? Or are they out of time? I would say if that happens, it's a miracle because no signs we've seen thus far point to that because they still refuse to listen. Youngkin won because he said, I will listen to yep. parents. Winsome Sears won because her hashtag was vote for America 2021. Yeah, that. They Optimism, are yeah. the unifiers. This president is absolutely not. He's the Tyrants opposite. never listen. It's true. Tyrants <laughs> never listen. There you go. All right, we'll move on. Neither do Democrats. Uh, Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.